It was a perfect line. We got up there, got off the train, stepped outside, the van was there. We stopped at the first stop sign. The second stop sign, we was going down. We was just coasting. There was a guardrail looking at me. There's one car coming from the left, and he smashed the gas. The van left the road and went airborne into a ravine. After hitting the wall on the far side, the van fell approximately 15 feet to the bottom. The most commonly asked question is whose fault is it? The claim for a railroad worker in a taxi case is directly against the railroad. That taxi driver is as liable as if he was a railroad worker. And the railroad is liable for everything that driver does. Paramedics rushed Roy to Atlanta Medical Center where x-rays of his spine were taken. Four days later, an MRI was ordered by Roy's family physician, which confirmed the findings of the x-ray. Fractured two vertebrae in my back. It was a very confusing time for me because uh, when it first happened, I was restricted to my house. In a taxi case, the injuries look a lot like motor vehicle collisions. Injured necks, injured backs, injured knees, injured shoulders. Significant and serious orthopedic injuries. All the doctors told me I would have chronic pain for the rest of my life. I was taking the shots in my back to relieve the pain, and uh, I actually have a stimulator in my back now that uh, I can turn on. And this accident ended my railroad career because I couldn't go back to work and take the impact on my back. This is a case that settled only when we spent the time to fully illustrate what was going on with Roy Lott. We basically took a computer and we had it animated on a computer screen where we could actually show what was going on in his back. And the doctor was able to show clearly that it was both caused by the injury and also what the future consequence is going to be. Roy's quality of life has been further diminished by his inability to engage in the activities that once defined this virile, athletic, and outgoing man the same activities that were the foundation of his joy and identity. Jamie came in and he educated me. Um, and he led me through the process and, and basically took me by the hand like a preschooler. And if it wasn't for him, I, I don't think that I would have got anywhere near the results that I, I, I retained. We advocate for railroad employees, their family members, and that's what we're available to do for them, is to answer the questions that they can't get from their employer. Anytime a railroad worker is injured at work, they definitely need to report it, but they also take a picture of it. Write down as much information as, as they can. Who, what, when, where, and how. Definitely always pay attention to the drivers. A lot of them work long hours, so you have to be alert and watch them, even though you've been on the train for long hours and you may be tired. There's just so many just ways to get hurt out there. Most importantly, a railroad worker should act quickly. If you don't act quickly, I've had cases where documents disappear. If you get help quickly, you're better able to preserve the evidence, which protects your claim and your rights. He always had me and my family and that, that's another big thing is my family seemed to matter to him. Uh, we still stay in contact and talk to one another on a personal level and he's uh, one of the most outstanding people I know. Under the laws, who's responsible? Ultimately, the responsibility for providing a safe place to work is the railroads. <laughs>